Hello, my name is John Simpson. In this short video, we will be covering rendering from 3ds Max using the Art Renderer, as well as bringing our image sequence into Premiere and turning it into a finished video. We'll begin with a few assumptions. I'm assuming that you've already finished your animation and are ready to render. So here is a short animation that I created for this demonstration. We will begin by looking at our render settings. For this demonstration, I will be using the Art Render Engine. You'll want to select Production Rendering Mode, as well as the Art Renderer. In the Common tab, the Rollout, we have some options for time output. You can render a single frame, or you can render the entire active time segment. In this case, it's 0 to 174. That's what I'll be doing for this demonstration. If you're rendering more than a couple hundred frames, you might want to set it up for range and render in chunks. Next is the area to render. You can leave this set to view and that will just render whatever the active viewport is. Next is the output size. Um, there are many options here. For our purposes, speed is of the essence, so we will be rendering rather small, 640 by 480. Uh, there are many different options, including HD and so on. For us, just custom, 640 by 480 is what we want. The last thing we're going to look at in the common tab is the render output. I'm going to go ahead and click where it says files. This is where I will designate where the files will be saved to. When I first started this project, of course, I set up my project folder so Max knows to send them to the render output. Since I'm going to be rendering this as still frames, I'm going to make another subfolder here. And I'm just going to call this rendered frames. Organization is quite important. Now, under where it says Save as Type, let's go ahead and double click into that. Where it says Save as Type, we have a number of different options here. Um, you can render straight video from 3ds Max, but I do not recommend it. I generally render JPEG images, and I'm just going to call this uh, Stairs underscore. Oops, be nice if I spelled Stairs correctly. There we go. Uh, and I put the underscore on the end because Max is going to take the frame number and put it at the end of whatever I have told it to save the file name as. So we'll just hit save. Uh, I'm going to ask for JPEG quality controls. I usually do best. All right. Next, we're going to jump over to the Art Renderer tab. Here we have options for the quality of our render. Again, speed is of the essence, so I'm going to be doing draft. You can bring this up. It's conveniently measured in decibels. The higher the, the decibel quality, the longer the render time. The one thing that I am going to change here is under noise filtering. I'm going to go ahead and enable that, and I'm going to set it to about 25%. This is just going to kind of smooth out the image and get rid of some of the noise that is inherent with this render engine. All right. Once I have set those up and I'm rendering all of that, I'm going to go ahead and hit render. Now this will take a little bit of time, um, depending on your settings. This isn't going to take too long, uh, about 15 minutes. So I will see you on the other side. All right, so we're back. Uh, it's been about 15 minutes, and as you can see, I have a folder full of images. Now, each one of these images represents a single frame in my animation. So we are pretty much done with 3ds Max at this point. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize that. Now, the next part in this process is to bring these over to Adobe Premiere or some other editing software and turn it into an actual video. Um, so I usually use Adobe Premiere, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, I've already got it started. I'm going to set up a new project. Bring this over here so we can actually see it. 
Uh, we will call this uh, stair ball. And it's important that you pay attention to where you're saving it. I'm going to go ahead and browse. I like to keep everything in the same folder so that all of my project files are where they need to be. And I can find them, so I'm going to go to my 3ds Max project folder. And we'll just go ahead and put this in render output as well. I'll create a new folder. We'll just call this Premiere Files. We're going to go in there. We'll say Select Folder. So we can see that I have called it Stairball, and it is going to save it in my project folder. So we'll hit OK. Now, once I've done that, um, it's going to go ahead and open up Premiere. This video is in no way intended to be a comprehensive Premiere video. There are much better people out there who have done much better videos. Um, just go to YouTube and type in basic Premiere and you know, the answers are out there if you look for them. Um, but for our purposes, we're simply going to begin by importing our media. So I'm going to go to my project bin and go right click and say import. And we will just go up. Now, since this is an image sequence, stair 0001, stair 0, I'm sorry, 0000, 0001, 0002, and so on, I can simply click the first in the sequence, tick the little box that says image sequence, and say open. That's going to take all of my images and bring them in. And if I scrub my playhead over the top, we can easily see the animation playing down there. Secondly, I'm going to right-click the clip that was created by importing those image sequence and say new sequence from clip. That is going to bring it over here and place it on my timeline. If I hit play now, I can go ahead and see my video play. Now, I did this in a particular way so that I could bring out multiple copies of this and maybe have it loop a couple of times and it should loop relatively smoothly, at least I hope so. Okay, um, at its base that is all you really need to do at this point you would export this out. It might be a good idea to go ahead and check your sequence settings so I'm going to come up here to sequence and sequence settings and uh, under edit I rendered this out at 30 frames per second the default for this is 29.97 we're going to go ahead and just bump that up to 30 so it stays the way it should. Um, 640 by 480 was the rendered image size, so that's all pretty good. We'll say OK. Uh, at this point now, I could go ahead and export this out. I would just say Export Media. Um, but instead of doing that right now, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a piece of music that I downloaded from Kevin McLeod's website. If you're not familiar with Kevin McLeod, he writes a lot of video game music and um, pretty much gives it away for free. So here is a um, little, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shoot, I don't even know, a pitch for, for Kevin McLeod's website. Uh, great place to get music. The only thing he asks is that you include a little license that he has written up uh, in whatever you use his music in. So that is uh, incomptech.com. To bring the music into Premiere, again, is a simple matter of importing it. So I go back to my project bin. I say import. I browse to where I saved the music at. And this is going to be under my scene assets sounds. So that will bring in the piece of music. To bring this in and put it on the uh, timeline, really simple. Just bring it and drop it down on one of those sound layers. The last thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and put some titles in here. So I'm going to just grab my type tool, and we'll click up here. I'm going to call this something like uh, Endless Stairs, Endless Stair Ball. Man, I can't type today. Endless Stair Ball. Sounds great. Um, and then I will also add the license for the music. I'm going to jump over here to my editing. Make 
my text a little smaller. That's weird. Oh, I know what it is. Helps if I select the right piece of text. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that on there. Maybe throw my name in there as well. So, by Simpson. one more. We'll just go ahead and make sure that people understand that we're talking about the music. All right, so now I am ready to export my video from Premiere. Let's go ahead and test it and just take a look at it real quick. Make sure that everything looks good. And I see a mistake already. If you'll notice, my audio is much longer than my video, and I don't really want that. So I'm going to use my razor tool to trim off the excess audio. Once I've done that, select it with the selection tool and just hit delete. So let's go ahead and see what we got. All right, the last thing I'd like to do is I'm just going to shorten up my title. I can do that by grabbing the end of it and just dragging it to the part of the timeline I want it to be. One more test just to make sure things work the way I want them to. All right, and there we have it. So now I'm just going to go up to File. Let's go ahead and save my project. File one more time export media now again you can export a number of different ways I am a big fan of h.264 uh, that's going to create an mp4 file which is a nice mix between file size and file quality uh, I click on output name to make sure that it's putting it where I want it let's go ahead and we're going to back that up and just put it under a new folder in my render output so we'll call this completed video And rename this Endless Stairball. Once I hit Save, I come down and I hit Export. Depending on how long your video is, this could be a quick or a slow process, one of the two. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and see how it came out. So completed video. Open with. Like I said, this video is in no way intended to be comprehensive for either one of these programs, but hopefully it will get you started and get you going. Um, we live in an age now where anything and everything you want to learn can be found on the internet. So do some Googling and you'll be surprised at what you can learn. All right. Have a great day. Hope this was helpful.